Good evening, Stevens Point. I'm Nathan Wagner. And I'm Claudia Neve. This week on SPTV News, UWSP cuts academic majors and faculty, Taste of Wisconsin is coming up, and UWSP is offering active shooter trainings. All of this and more when we return. <laughs> Over the past several years, enrollment has declined as UW-Stevens Point has graduated seniors faster than it can enroll freshmen. One reason is because fewer high school graduates are entering the market for higher education. Due to the declining enrollment, the school is projecting a $2.5 million deficit in 2019 and a $2 million deficit in 2020. Moreover, the university is looking at cutting academic majors and laying off faculty to deal with a $4.5 million structural deficit. Greg Summers, UW Stevens Point Provost and Vice Chancellor of Academic Affairs, said layoffs could involve tenured faculty. Summers also stated that years of state budget cuts and tuition freezes have compounded the university's financial problems. If the financial problems aren't turned around, they could eventually impact UW Marathon County in Wausau and UW Marshfield Wood County, which will become branch campuses of UW Stevens Point. However, University of Wisconsin Stevens Point is continuously working towards adjusting this new situation. The Basement Brew House's Taste of Wisconsin is an event that allows you to taste test local Wisconsin's food. Wan Chin Lee and Austin Lee Pack have more. Basement Brew House's Taste of Wisconsin is an open public event that is part of UWSP. This event is one of the more popular events for the venue, and on Friday it will be the Basement Brew House's 18th time hosting the Taste of Wisconsin event. We sat down to talk with Greg Dyker to get more information about the event. Uh, so the Taste of Wisconsin is an annual event put on by the Basement Brew House to showcase all of the great products that are made here in Wisconsin. One of the things that we pride ourselves in the brew house is the almost everything uh, served there is made in Wisconsin. And this is an opportunity for us to showcase some of the more specific uh, beers and wines and cheeses and sausages and uh, potatoes and neat things that uh, are here in Wisconsin exclusively. At the event, a variety of foods from all over Wisconsin will be present. The purpose of the event is to get feedback from people after they taste them in order to find the food people like best so it can be sold in the future. We try to do a lot of research to see what's available uh, to potentially sell in the brew house. Uh, we don't necessarily sell cheese, but uh, we want to highlight, uh, again, things that are made here in Wisconsin. Uh, we might, down the road, look at uh, doing something with cheese in the future. Uh, another reason we do the event is that we uh, serve some products that we don't normally sell in the brew house to look for feedback from the people that are there to potentially add that to the inventory in the brew house to sell in the future. There will be many different brands and products that will support this event by being there such as different coffees, cheeses, beers, and whiskeys. We have obviously a lot of things from the Stevens Point Brewery here in our hometown. Big Bull Falls Brewery will be here, Capital Brewery out of, out of Madison, um, City Brewery out of La Crosse, several breweries out of the Milwaukee area, Hinterland Brewery out of the Green Bay area for beers. Uh, we have some wines coming. Uh, again, a local one is the Sunset Point Winery will be here, uh, a wine out of the Madison area called uh, Von Steele. Um, a couple of other wines I can't remember off the top of my head. I think Door County Wines are going to be here. Uh, we'll be featuring our coffee from uh, that we serve in the brew house, which just comes out of Milwaukee with Stone Creek Coffee. Uh, some of the foods include uh, Nooski's Meats out of, um, I think they're out of the Wausau area. Uh, we have a couple of the uh, Mullins Cheese uh, from just up the road here. Uh, as a couple other cheese places, we'll be sending some things. Um, potatoes from one of the Central Wisconsin potato farmers, I don't remember which one. Uh, our dining services folks will be uh, making those up into um, twice baked potatoes. So, lots of different things. Greg Dykerger urges people to support local food makers as it will promote the local economic development. Central Wisconsin has got a lot of great uh, unique things uh, to it in regard to the types of products that the, are provided. So this event not only allows us to look at those things, potentially sell in the brew house, but as if you were to come to the event, you might find something that you wouldn't normally try at this event. And then when you go to your local grocery store or your local wherever to get the product, you say, oh, I remember that at the, brew, at the uh, Taste of Wisconsin, so I'm going to get that for uh, my home. 
For SBTV News, this has been Austin Lee Peck and Wen Chun Lee reporting. The event will be on Friday, March 2nd from 7 o'clock to 10 o'clock p.m. in the basement brew house. After the shootings in Florida, many people are concerned with the potential shootings in the future. UWSP has organized a training in case of an active shooter situation on campus. This is a training that will be conducted by UW Stevens Point Risk Management, the University Police, Stevens Point Police, and Stevens Point Fire EMS. The Student Government Association is sponsoring this event and encourages members of the community to be part of the training. The training is Monday, March 5th at 6 p.m. at the TNR building in room 170. The EENA, Environmental Educators and Naturalists Association, is looking for a creative t-shirt design for their annual spring fundraiser for Earth Week Eco Fair. This year's theme is Discover Your Community. What's in your backyard? Anyone is welcome to submit their work. The requirements for their submission can be looked up on campus announcements. The deadline to submit work is on Monday, March 19th. For more information, contact Carol Cole from EENA. The Central Wisconsin Collegiate Job Fair is happening on March 6th. Brianna Schmidt and Dejanae Scott have more. If you're looking for an internship or your first job after graduation, the UW Stevens Point Collegiate Job Fair has the opportunity for you. Sponsored by UW Marshfield, Wood County, Mid State Technical College, UW Stevens Point, and the UW Marathon County, the Central Wisconsin Collegiate Job Fair aims to find graduates interested in career positions or students who are seeking internships. The event will take place Tuesday, March 6, 2018, from noon to 4 p.m. in the DUC Laird Room. The Academic and Career Advising Center is also holding many career preparation presentations that help students become better prepared for job interviews, help students create resumes and cover letters, and help students locate career opportunities. The Academic and Career Advising Center also holds presentations on websites like LinkedIn and Handshake, which hold more information about the collegiate job fair. On Handshake, the complete list of scheduled employers will be available for the job fair. The job opportunities range from healthcare to retail to nonprofit organization. Dress in professional or business casual and don't forget to bring a copy of your resume. If you'd like to know more, contact Libby Heidman. This is Brianna Schmidt and Deshane Scott with SPTV News. To find out more, contact Lobby Heidman. Entertainment has organized another concert for UWSP. An alternative band that blends folk, pop, hip hop, and rock and roll will perform at the University of Wisconsin Stevens Point in May. Judah and the Lion was formed in Nashville by musicians from separate corners of the United States who brought their diverse backgrounds together. Their second album, Folk, Hop, and Roll, highlights their wide ranging sounds with fuzz bags, hip hop percussion, distorted banjo riffs, and supersized melodies. A single from that album, Take It All Back, reached number one from alternative song charts. The band has played across the United States and Scandinavia. Judah and the Lion will, will be opening with the act Billy Raffle will play on Friday, May 4th from 7.30 p.m. at the Quant Fieldhouse. Get up close and personal with the night sky this spring at the UWSP Allen F. Bloker Planetarium. The show, More Than Meets the Eye, takes a deeper look at objects of the night sky as seen through a telescope or binoculars during a night of observing, compared to observatory photos and spacecraft views. This is a free event with the planetarium seating first come, first serve for up to 55 people. More Than Meets the Eye will be presented Sundays at 2 p.m., March 11th and 18th, April 8th, 15th, 22nd and 29th, and May 6th at the planetarium. The planetarium and observatory are located on the second and fourth floor of the UWSP Science Building. Spring is coming early to Schmeekley Reserve at UWSP with a variety of free workshops that celebrate the upcoming season. These public programs will be taught by UW Stevens Point students at the Reserve Center. Some of the activities may be scheduled outdoors. The first workshop is Sweet and Savvy, which is a walk through the reserve to discover how syrup nourishes both trees and people. This will be on Tuesday, March 6th, 5 to 6 p.m. The following workshop is spring cleaning, hibernator style. This is about what is on an animal's to-do list when they wake up from a long winter's nap. This will be on Thursday, March 8th, 6 to 7 p.m. There are several workshops scheduled, which can be found on campus announcements or on the website for Schmeekley Reserve. That is all the news we have for you this evening. We will be right back with sports after the break. It's a very welcoming place. Even if you don't know what support you need, um, just coming down, we can look at individual schedules and talk about all the different options that are available.
believe that the TLC can definitely help students even for the slightest little bit, the writing lab especially, because you're going to have to write papers for any of the classes. They're able to proofread those and give you feedback on those. Uh, the writing lab has been around since 1973, and it's the second oldest writing lab in the United States, which is kind of cool. surprised by everything that I learned about TLC because I didn't realize there were so many resources for students. We'd love to see more students down here. I mean, it's great that we have 35% of the student population utilizing us, but that means that we have 65% that didn't utilize us, and I know we have support services that could benefit just about everybody. It means to me that I'm able to add another link between the TLC and the students. I know that as a big organization it's kind of hard to get word out to the students, especially because they're not going out and meeting with the students or being part of their classes or anything like that. So having that extra link probably helps them out a lot. And when you come down there's free coffee, tea, and hot cocoa, so make themselves at home and, and learn a little bit about how they can be supported. Welcome back, Pointers. In sports this week, the Pointers are going dancing. The UWSP men's basketball team is heading back for the NCAA tournament for the first time since 2015 when they won the national title. The Pointers secured their spot in the tournament by beating UW Oshkosh 71-63 on Friday night and then beating UW River Falls 59-44 on Sunday to win the WIAC tournament. MJ Delmore led the offense for the Pointers with 22 points. The Pointers head on the road to Minnesota tomorrow for a first round matchup against North Central College. If they beat North Central, they'll play the winner of the St. John's and Bethany Lutheran matchup. The Pointers men's hockey team are going to the conference tournament title game for their third straight season after beating UW River Falls 5-1 on Friday and then 3-2 on Saturday. Freshman goaltender Connor Rickman filling in for the injured Max Milosic had 21 saves and Tanner Carty led the offense with two goals of his own. They face the UW Eau Claire Blue Golds on Saturday at 7 p.m. in KB Willett Arena. The Pointers women's basketball team saw their season come to an end at the quarterfinals of the WIAC tournament against UW Eau Claire 56 to 53. Lexi Rowland led the Pointers in what would be her final game with 15 points. On Tuesday, the WIAC conference announced its all-conference teams. Mickey Rowland found herself on the first team and all-defensive team. Fellow senior Taylor Barrett found herself on the all-honorable mention team, and junior Caitlin Broberg was named to the all-sportsmanship team. The UWSP women's hockey team saw their season come to an end this past season. The Pointers lost to UW River Falls 9-0 on Friday and 6-1 on Saturday. The Pointers finished their season with a record of 13-11-3. The Wisconsin Badgers basketball team wrapped up the regular season with a 68-63 loss at home against Michigan State on Sunday. The Badgers were led by a gutsy performance at the hands-on freshman point guard Brad Davidson. Early in the second half, Davidson's shoulder popped out. After having it popped back in, he continued to play, finishing with a career high of 30 points. On Monday, the Big Ten Conference announced its all-conference teams. Ethan Happ landed on first team, all Big Ten, voted by the Amida, and second team, all Big Ten, voted by the coaches. Brad Davidson landed on the Big Ten all-freshman team. The Badgers' first game of the conference tournament was this morning against Maryland, and they came away with a 59-54 win. Ethan Happ led the Badgers' offense with 14 points. The Badgers will play Michigan State tomorrow at 11 a.m. That's all the sports stories we have for you tonight. Up next is Entertainment News with Daishanae Scott. I'm Brianna Schmidt for SPTV Sports. So, I hear they have like a sale at the DUC or whatever. Yeah. Some like type of coffee.
because I'm going with this now. Orzala, ah! the seventh largest book printer in North America, is hiring students for the semester. We are 100% employee owned and located right here in Stevens Point, Wisconsin. All shifts currently hiring with jobs starting at $10.80 an hour. Hours are flexible. For more information, contact the Warzala HR department. Pointers, Centertainment Productions will be hosting a screening of the latest Pixar hit Coco. The film follows the journey of a young boy named Miguel who dreams of becoming a musician, despite a generational ban on music. Desperate to prove his talent, Miguel finds himself in the stunning and colorful land of the dead. After meeting a charming trickster named Hector, the two new friends embark on an extraordinary journey to unlock the real story behind Miguel's family history. Screenings will be held on, held on May 7th and 9th at 7 p.m. and 9.30 p.m. and May 10th at 3.30 p.m. in the DUC Theater. Closed captioning will be shown during the 9.30 p.m. showing on the 18th in Spanish viewing with English subtitles on Friday, March 9th at 9.30 p.m. The event is free with a student ID or $3 without. The Noel Fine Arts Center is hosting a clarinet studio recital that will give all the students in the clarinet studio a chance to show off their skills. Michael Fisher will be accompanying the students on piano. The recital will take place this Sunday, March 4th at 7 p.m. in the Mickelson Hall. This event is free and open to the public. If you would like more information about the event, contact the music department in the Noel Fine Arts Center. Text takes on physical forms at UWSP's Edna Carlson Gallery through a new exhibit, Kinesthetic Typography. The artist Helen Lee is an assistant professor and head of glassworking at UW-Madison. She has won several awards in the inaugural Erwin Borowski Prize in Glass Art, Edna Wishner's Arts in Wisconsin's Award, and the Gold Award in the Bullseye Emerge 2016 ex exhibition. Her works are featured in the Minnesota Museum of American Art, Corning Museum of Glass, Chrysler Museum Glass Studio, and Toyama City Institute of Glass Art. Her work is now on display until Monday, March 19th, with a closing reception and artist talk on the final day at 4 p.m. The gallery is open to the public Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., on Thursdays from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m., and on weekends from 1 to 4 p.m. If you like dancing, playing games, and supporting a good cause, then this event is for you. Dance Marathon is hosting an event to support the local Children's Miracle Networking Hospital. There will be a Zumba instructor, families from the Children's Hospital, prizes to win, and more. It costs $3 to enter and an additional $2 for unlimited food donated by Noodles, IHOP, Culver's, and more. The event will be held on Saturday, March 10th from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. in the DUC Laird Room. Our proceeds go directly to the Children's Miracle Network Hospital. That's all we have for you this week for entertainment news. Now over to Nicole Pfeiffer with Pointer Politics. I'm Deshanae Scott with SPTV Entertainment News. Welcome back, Pointers. In politics this week, the State Elections Commission is refuting an NBC News report claiming Wisconsin websites or voter registration systems were compromised by the Russian hackers prior to the 2016 election. U.S. officials told NBC the American intelligence community had developed considerable evidence that websites or voter registration systems in seven states, including Wisconsin, were compromised and that they never told the states involved. However, a statement from the commission said the Wisconsin Elections Commission has never detected a successful hacking attempt on its systems, nor has it ever been notified of one by the Department of Homeland Security or any other state or federal agency. The statement was sent to NBC more than a week before it, it published its report. The Elections Commission also said, after checking with U.S. Homeland Security and other partners, they confirmed no other hacking attempt besides a 2016 scanning attempt 
five of the five of the states whose online systems were allegedly breached also denied the NBC report. An official with the Wisconsin Association of School Boards stated earlier this week that an assembly bill to provide grants to schools that wish to tighten their security is a step in the right direction, but more resources will likely be needed. Bob Butler, the Associate Executive Director of the Wisconsin Association of School Boards, said Wisconsin schools have been diligent over the years in adopting safety plans and are revisiting them frequently, especially after the recent increase in school shootings. He said they are also trying to intercede on the front end with troubled students looking at things that may have precipitated these kinds of thoughts and or behaviors. When asked about the suggestions of teachers taking training and carrying weapons in school, Butler said there are many questions surrounding that, including liability and staff willingness to carry guns. Butler was also asked about a bill that the assembly passed that would create a grant program to pay armed guards in schools. Butler replied, we think it's a step in the right direction. Ultimately, what we would prefer to see is resources available for those schools districts so they could have resource officers or police liaison officers if they want to go that route. Pointer Politics will keep you updated on this topic. That's all we have for you this week in Pointer Politics. I'm Nicole Pfeiffer and we'll be right back after the break. Quiet on set. We'll be back in 10, 9, 8, Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Take Ben. Live at SPTV. Mic check. Audio check. News directors adjusting the sound. Teleprompter running smoothly. Floor director alert. Cameras are rolling. Bring in the talent. Where's the makeup artist? Anchors ready for the news. Are you ready to join SPTV? That's a wrap. Lights out. Tobacco use is the largest preventable cause of death and disease in the United States. Cigarette smoke kills more than 480,000 Americans each year. 41,000 of these deaths are from exposure to secondhand smoke. Smoking harms nearly every organ in the body. Every day, more than 3,800 kids under the age of 18 can smoke their first cigarette. More than 16 million Americans live with a smoking-related disease. On average, smokers die 10 years younger than non-smokers. Smoking causes cancer, heart disease, strokes, lung diseases, diabetes, and chronic bronchitis. That's all we have this week at SPTV News. Until next time, Stevens Point, have a great night.